have a form here where I can create a new user record, uh, give the user a name, and choose an avatar image to upload. So I have uh, an image of Batman here, and notice it's a rather large image, uh, 1280 pixels wide. Click Choose, and when I click Create User, it's going to automatically handle the resizing and cropping of this image to make it a 100 by 100 pixel square. But what I would like to do is give the user more control over exactly how their avatar image is cropped, allowing them to select a specific portion of the image. And that's what I want to show you how to do in this episode. Now here's what I have so far in the application. I'm using Carrier Wave to handle the uploading of the image like I showed in episode 253. You can see here I have a user model. I'm calling Mount Uploader on an avatar column, and it's called Avatar Uploader. And here's what that Avatar Uploader class looks like. You can see it's using R magic to do the uh, resizing and cropping. And you can see I have one version of the image called thumb and that's resizing to 100 by 100 pixels and filling that entire area and cropping it towards the center. Now the way I want this to work is that after the user chooses an image and submits the form, I want to bring them to a secondary page where they can choose a portion of the image to crop to. And I could use the original full resolution image, but that can be rather large. So instead I'm going to create another variation of this image that's a little bit smaller than the original so that they can use that to crop from. So inside of the avatar uploader here where I'm making the thumb version, let's make another version that is called large. And I'll make this 600 by 600 pixels. And instead of calling resize to fill because that will crop it, instead I want to call resize to limit just to ensure it's no bigger than this resolution, but that won't scale it up either. Now inside of the user's controller where I have the create and update actions, I want to bring them to a secondary page when an avatar image is present. So after it saves the user, let's check the parameters and see if a user avatar is present. And if it is, then we want to uh, render out a crop uh, template and otherwise we'll just do the redirect. So let's do the same thing for the update action here as well. So if it successfully updates, it's going to render out a crop uh, template, then otherwise it's going to do a full redirect. Now you may also want to make a dedicated crop action so that the user can crop at any time, but this will work for us here. So let's make a crop template here called crop.html.erb. So let's call this a uh, crop avatar. And then what we want to do is uh, just display the large image. So I'll do an image tag and then call the user avatar URL and then just for the large version of that avatar image. So now when I go to the user form with an image and submit the form, it's going to bring me to this crop avatar page and display the large image. So what I want to do is add an option to select a portion of this image. And for that, I'm going to use this library called jcrop. Now jcrop is a great little jQuery plugin to handle the selection of cropping an image. And you could check out the demos if you want, but then just download it. Now I've already downloaded this plugin and placed the appropriate files under the vendor assets directory here in my project. You can see I've got a jcrop image, JavaScript, and stylesheet file. Now one thing to be aware of is that this image here is referenced from the CSS. Now this will work fine in development mode, but in production in the asset pipeline, Rails is going to add a hash to the end of this image name, which may cause a problem with this. Uh, if this is a problem, you may want to either just move the jcrop image into the public assets directory, or you can uh, change this so it dynamically references the image properly, or you can uh, just turn off hashing entirely in production. So really, it's up to you on how you want to handle this and how you're doing deployment. But since we're in development mode here, we don't have to worry about that quite yet. What we do need to change is under the app assets directory here, we do need to include uh, these files in the appropriate application files in here. So in our application.js file, after jQuery is loaded up, we can just add uh, jQuery.jcrop here. And then inside of the stylesheets application CSS file, we can add a new require statement here and just say uh, require jQuery.jcrop CSS file here. And then we'll need to enable jcrop on our large avatar image. So I'm going to do that inside of the user's coffee script file here. I'll just uh, first make sure the DOM is loaded. And we currently don't have an ID on our image, but let's make one. A common uh, one is called crop box. And then uh, we can just add jcrop here to enable it. So this means inside of our crop template here, we need to change this image and give it an ID of crop box so that it references that. 
Now you may need to restart your Rails app for those changes to take effect, but once you do and you submit the form with an image, you can see that on this crop avatar page, we have crosshairs where we can select a portion of this image to crop, and this is all handled by jcrop. Now this, uh, we still need a way to submit this cropping behavior, but we've got jcrop working so far. Now there are several options which you can pass into jcrop, but before I get into that, let's move this into a class because I know there are, there's gonna be quite a bit of JavaScript we'll need to do here. So let's call this avatar cropper. And uh, so let's make a new class here called avatar cropper. And we'll make a constructor here. And we'll just uh, call jcrop inside of here. And there are various options which we can pass in here. One of them being aspect ratio, and we'll set that to one, so that way it's constrained to a square. And another being uh, set select, which will take an array of x, y, uh, and width and height values. So let's make that 600 by 600, so that way it sets the first selection to as large as it can be inside of the image. So now when I reload this crop avatar page, you can see that the initial selection starts very large here, and I can just scale it down, and whatever I try to scale it at, it constrains it to a square. All right, now we need to somehow pass the selected crop area to the server so it can perform the actual cropping. And I'll do that inside of the crop template here inside of a form. So let's make a form four call here for the user model. So that way it will go to the update action. And for the submit button, let's call it crop. Now there are four values which we'll need to pass in through here for the cropping selection. We have the uh, X and Y values and the width and the height of the selected area. So for each of these attributes, let's uh, loop through these and create a hidden field for these. And let's call it uh, crop followed by the attributes such as X or Y. Actually, let's first uh, make this a text field so that we can actually see the values first just to see what they look like. Now currently our user model doesn't respond to these crop attributes, so we need to make these virtual attributes on the user model. So inside of the user class here, what we can do is make an attribute accessor call and make uh, attributes for each of those crop values that are being passed in through the form. So now we just have to go into the JavaScript and tell it to set those form field values every time the selection changes for the cropping area. So jcrop provides a couple of options that will help with this. One is called onSelect and one is called onChange. And both of these are uh, callbacks which we can pass in a JavaScript function to. So let's make a function called update on this class that will be triggered every time the selection area changes. So that's called update, and the coordinates are passed in here for the selection area. Now I'm going to use a fat arrow here so that the, it maintains the uh, context. So in here we need to grab the form field, which is going to be called uh, user crop x, and assign it the value to the coordinates x value. So we'll need to do that for each of the uh, values here, x, y, width, and height, and match it up to the uh, form fields here for each of those. So now when I reload this cropping page here, you can see it sets the uh, values down here depending on where I place the selection. So looks like that's working. So when the form gets submitted, this user model here will be updated with these proper crop attributes. So here we can trigger the cropping in an after update callback. So we can call after update here and let's call it crop avatar and we'll define that crop avatar method inside of here. So in here, we need to tell Carrier Wave to recreate those images to do the cropping. And we can do that with a call to avatar recreate uh, versions. And then we only want to do that if uh, a cropping is present. So let's do if crop X is present. And that way it won't happen every time the user model is saved. So now going into the avatar uploader class here, this thumbnail version will be recreated when that code gets triggered. So what we could do is add a little bit of cropping process on here. So we could say process crop and that way it will trigger this crop method every time the uh, thumbnail gets created. And here I'm just going to paste in a bit of code to do the actual cropping. So the way this works is uh, when we can, we can call model at any time to reference the user model, and we can grab the crop X value, make sure it's present. If it is, we'll actually do the cropping. So in carrier wave, you can call manipulate to grab the image uh, from image magic, and that way you can call crop on it to actually change the cropping value based off of the x, y, width, and height values from our user model. So now let's try this out. Notice I have a nice selected area of the picture here. Let's try clicking crop here and see if it works. And it doesn't look like it quite worked. It looks like it did crop an area of the image, but it's the wrong portion. So what happened here? 
The problem is that the image that we're cropping from is the full resolution image, but the coordinates are based off of the large version of the image. So a quick fix for that is just to uh, redo the sizing here before the actual cropping, so that way it sizes it down to the large version so the coordinates are correct. So let's try this again by cropping this image. Notice that it has a nice cropped area here. Click Crop, and now it's properly cropped based off of what we selected. So now that we know this is working, let's clean this up a bit by changing those uh, text fields here to hidden fields so that they aren't actually displayed. And I also want to finish up by showing you the code necessary to add a preview, a live preview of the cropping selection, if you want to add that. So I'll just paste in some code for this. Uh, this is a little live preview area which will be displayed uh, to the user on the crop page. And we'll also need a bit of JavaScript to update that live preview as the selection changes. And the coffee script will look something like this, where when uh, the update action is called, it also calls this update preview function. And this will um, basically take that preview and change the width, height, and margin positions based off of the selection coordinates. The end result looks like this, where we have a live preview down here. And as the cropping area changes, it dynamically changes the preview as well. So they can get it just the way they want it and then click on crop and that's the end result image that they get. Well, that's it for this revised episode on cropping images using jcrop and carrier wave. Hope you found this useful.